Hi kids, let's solve question on the topic morphology of angiosperms. Here is the very first question. The free central placentation is found in A. Citrus, B. Dianthus, C. Argumen and D. Brassica. Now, talking about free central placentation, let's first remind ourselves about the concept of placentation. What is placentation? It is simply the arrangement of ovules within the ovary along the placental tissue. And we study different types of this arrangement, such as exile placentation, parietal, basal, free central and marginal. Now, the question is asking about free central placentation. So, let's see what is free central placentation. As the name suggests, the ovules are born freely in the center of the ovary and this ovary is unilocular there are no septa there's a single chamber hence unilocular ovary and this placentation the classic example is dianthus next we talk about parietal placentation parietal placentation is when ovules develop on the periphery of the ovary the peripheral part of the ovary the sides of the ovary here also the ovary has a single chamber it is very much unilocular it is a unilocular ovary and classic example is brassica and argumen Next, we move on to exile placentation. Now, this ovary, as you can see, has septa, dividing the ovary into multiple chambers. So, multilocular ovary. And the middle part, the central axis, where the septa meet together, that is where the ovules are born. So, this is exile placentation seen in lemon. So, in the given question, Free central placentation gets the answer as dianthus. The question asks, in some plants, thalamus contributes to fruit formation. Such fruits are termed as, option A, are they false fruits? Are they aggregate fruits? Are they true fruits? Or D, is it parthenocarpic fruit? Let's discuss this concept of fruit formation to begin with. Well, we already know that ovary transforms itself into fruit post fertilization. Yes? Now, a true fruit is where the ovary develops into the fruit. The edible part, what you're eating, the juicy part is the ovary. And a true fruit is further categorized into simple fruit aggregate fruit and the composite or the multiple fruit. What is a simple fruit? Well, a simple fruit has a monocapillary gynoecium. Yeah? Or it will be a multicapillary syncarpus gynoecium. Yes, example is the true fruit tomato. Yes, tomato is not a vegetable. It is a simple true fruit. And the edible part is very much the ovary. Talking about aggregate fruit, it develops from multicapillary apocarpus gynoecium. Apocarpus means the ovary, the carpels, so to say, are not fused together. Yes? Now, the classic example is raspberry. Yeah? We call them the achenes. We call the fruits as achenes here. Next, we talk about multiple or the composite fruit. Now, children, here the fruit is developing from the entire inflorescence. Classic example is pineapple or even the fig fruit where the entire inflorescence develops into the fruit. Now, what is a false fruit? A false fruit is the one where ovary is not developing into the fruit. The, there are other parts such as thalamus which becomes the fruit. Classic example is apple. So, apple is a false fruit and so is cashew nut. Cashew nut is also a false fruit. Lastly, parthenocarpic fruits are the ones which develop without fertilization. So, definitely they are seedless fruits. Example is the seedless banana, which is a parthenocarpic fruit. If you look at the question, 
read the question now a fruit in which thalamus contributes to the fruit formation is called as a false fruit